Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about the big stuff in life, like our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with our loved ones, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is that I hope that it will bring comfort to you and help you feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. In today's episode, I want to talk about our fear of commitment. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because recently in my circle, there's just been a lot of conversation about being committed in relationship. So on one hand, you have people like myself who are recently engaged. So I've been engaged for over a month now, and I have quite a few friends who got engaged in the past two, three months as well, which I felt like it was a little bit a lot. (laughs) And at the same time, I have a few friends who are talking about breakup or are going through a breakup or are in that cross junction pretty much. And I think that that's because I'm currently 30 years old and I feel like this is the age where you get into relationship with a purpose for it to be a long-term relationship. Like I'm at an age where I am done dating for the sake of dating but I want this to be serious. And if this is not going to be serious, bye-bye. I'm, I'm done with this. I don't want to waste my time on this anymore. So I previously have this reputation of being someone who is not able to commit to anything. And from that person, I have become that person who has recently committed to a lifetime relationship. And I've been staying in the same city for over five years now. And I'm also staying in the same job for about four years now. So I'll be sharing with you about what happened here and how did I switch my mindset to get to the place where I am right now. So specifically how I'll be sharing it is I'll be going through the reasons why we are afraid of commitment, how we act when we act out of fear of our commitment, as well as how can we overcome this fear of commitment. So let's talk about the reasons why we are afraid of commitment. The very simple reason why we're afraid is because we are afraid that we choose the wrong person and we are worried about the what ifs like what if he cheats on me what if there's someone better out there or what if i can lead a better life if i were to be living in another place another city or what if committing to this person would actually have a negative impact on my career goal on my financial goals Or what if what I want in life changes as I get older? There is always going to be a gazillion of scenarios that we'll be thinking about because we don't know what we are getting into when we get into a relationship. So that is a very common concern. Now, secondly, we are also becoming really impatient human as well. At this day and age, we are so used to getting instant results for everything that we want. We get our answers like, you know, on a snap and questions that used to take days for us to get an answer. We can easily type it into chat GPT and get an answer instantly as well. But the thing with relationship is you cannot get your answers so fast. You have to actually get to know this person. You actually have to communicate and spend time together so that you can figure out if this person is suitable. But at the same time, because we have become such impatient people, it's very hard for us to want to commit to this person. And you got to understand that as a woman, especially if you are thinking of having kids of your own. We also have our biological clock that is ticking as well. So we are getting impatient. We don't want to spend too much time, but at the same time, we want to know the answer as well. And thirdly, I think that it's very hard for us to want to commit because we are afraid that once we commit, there is no way out. Now, personally, if I were to get married one day, I do not want to have divorce as an option in my marriage. Because for me, if I'm getting married to this person, if I'm going through all the hassles of going through all the paperwork and the document, why do I want to go through all the hassle of a divorce? Like that should be a lifetime commitment. But that said, it also means that if divorce is not an option, that means that there is no way out. And it's actually quite scary to think about it. Like, 
I would ask myself questions like, do I want to commit to this one dick for the rest of my life? Like, am I going to be satisfied? And I know that it sounds funny when you say it, but it is true. Like, I need to know that I can be sexually satisfied for the rest of my life. It is a legit concern, right? And also like the thought of a lifetime commitment, it is just very big in comparison to the number of years that you have been dating, like one or two or five years. A lifetime just seems really scary. Even though I I do have to say that if you really put into perspective, right, we never know how old we are going to be when we die. Like you and I, we can easily die tomorrow or day after tomorrow or any time. And so it doesn't mean that the number of years that we are married to this person is actually going to be very long. If you get what I mean, right? I'm just trying to put things into perspective. At the thought of it, it feels like, oh my God, a lifetime, it's a lot. But if you're going to die tomorrow, getting married right now, it's actually pretty okay, right? But all in all, I think not being committed just means that it is a lot easier for you to run away from wherever you are when things get rough. When you have one more person that you are committed to, someone that is very similar to your family, it is just very hard to leave this person behind anymore. So I get how being committed to a person can totally be really, really scary. I remember when I was still at the place when I was very afraid of commitment, I personally was going through a pretty bad place mentally. It was a season where I was just going through a lot of things. I remember that I was relying a lot on substances to help me to get by my days and I was also in quite a few casual relationships as well just to numb myself from the troubles that I was going through. Now depression is something that I want to talk about on another episode so I won't get too deep into it but I remember I was going through this phase when I was in my depressive state. At that point of my life, I couldn't stay in one place or one job or even a relationship for a very long time. I think the longest job that I had before my current job was one year. And almost every single year, I would move to a new place to live. Like I was just the definition of a person who couldn't commit to anything. And from what I gathered from my experience, I feel like when we are afraid of commitment, we basically were just acting based on our feelings instead of the responsibilities that we have. So anytime when something goes wrong at that time, I would just think, it's okay, this is going to be temporary. I don't need to care much about it. At that point, I actually got my visa to go back to Canada because I was not happy here. And so whenever anything doesn't go well in my life, I would just think, it's okay, I'm going to leave this place anyway. Goodbye. And I never really fix the problems proactively. I feel like when we are not committed to something, we just don't care so much and we just don't try to fix the problems to make things better, which probably explains why things are always so toxic and so bad when we are not committed. You see where I'm going? But you have to know that when you are dating someone that you already know is not going to be there in your future, It's just a waste of time for yourself and also for that person or everybody else as well. Because what is going to happen is you are just going to fall more and more deeper into the feelings that you had for this person because you are spending more time together, you are having more memories together. You are bound to have some sort of relationship or feeling no matter what. So when it comes to time when you have to end it, It's just going to be painful for everybody. And at the same time, when you are putting all of your attention spent, when you are spending time with this person all the time, how are you going to have time to meet someone else that you can potentially actually commit for the rest of your life? It is just a very toxic place to be in. And I know how that at that point of your life, you might not feel that way. You might feel like, this is comfortable. I have someone who can care for me. I have someone who can take care of my needs. I think that is enough. But no, it will come to a point when you just realize that you're just wasting your time from the things that you can actually commit and and improve and get better and make better in your life. So then how can we overcome this fear of commitment, right? 
you have to know the biggest reason why we're all afraid of commitment is because we are afraid of the wrong decision. We are worried that, you know, all the what ifs that we thought about and we don't want to waste our time and we are worried that, you know, we can never get away from this relationship, which sounds really scary. But the thing about relationship is that you can only know if it's going to work out if you commit to this relationship first. You need to first try it out. You need to first give your best to know if it's going to work out. So in order to overcome your fear of commitment, you really need to first fix yourself. Because we are unable to commit to a relationship when we are not able to commit to the decisions that we make. So the key is actually to learn how to honor your decisions. Now, I know that we're talking about relationship today, but this is actually applicable to your business, to your job, to every aspect of your life. You need to learn to honor your decision. So once a decision is made, you have to own it. Instead of thinking that, oh, it's okay, I can just give up, I can just break up, I can just get a divorce. No, you have to own this decision that you make. You cannot be flaky anymore. Relationship is a commitment. And a commitment means that love and infatuation, it is not enough. You really need to work hard. There's going to be sacrifices needed to actually make things work for this committed relationship. And for me personally, because I own my decision that I'm committing to a relationship of a lifetime with my partner, with my fiancé, I'm going to make it work no matter what. I am going to communicate when I feel negative about something, if I'm angry at him. I have to figure things out if I find myself to be attractive to other guys. Instead of taking action, I need to understand why and I need to fix it. And I might need to even talk to Kevin about it if that is such an issue in my life. I would have to spice things up if I find that our relationship is getting really boring. And I won't be surprised if it happens because we're going to be together for a long time. It's bound to happen, right? And I am already planning to get into relationship coaching or counseling because I believe that if this is something that is going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life, I will need to invest to improve this relationship or to fix it if there's any problem. And I know that, yes, one day down the road, there might be a chance that things might not work out between Kevin and I. It is a reality for all relationships. And I already know that it will be so heartbreaking if it actually happens. But if I have already done everything that I could for this relationship that I really cared about, if I have already committed to it and actually did every single thing that I could to make it work, and if it still doesn't work out, I wouldn't regret it. Because I know that I have given my best to see if it works. And I also know that this is based on a decision that I've made at the age of 30 years old because I believe at that point that it is the best decision that I can take for my life. Like I'm owning every single thing. And I know that even if it happens, it sucks. But I also believe that everything in life happens for a reason, even though I really hope that it doesn't happen, right? But if it happens... It's for a reason and I'll figure it out at that point. There's no point worrying right now. So yeah, because I honor my decisions, I will do whatever it takes to make things work for this relationship. So that's pretty much what I have to share today. I really think that the key to overcoming our fear of commitment, it's as simple as honoring your decision but I also know that it's very hard for a lot of people. So I understand that many of us, we have seen a lot of messed up things in our lives. We have seen the least expected people cheating on their partner. We have seen partners that we thought they are like perfect for each other, but ended up breaking up anyways. So I totally understand that fear. But even though we cannot control other people's relationship, we definitely can control how we approach our relationship. And, and I can be honest with you that I still have my own fear when it comes to committing to this long-term relationship, but I am honoring my decisions now. I'll continue to keep you posted about how I feel about this entire engagement. So we are planning to get married in two years' time, and I know that things can change a lot in a very short time, and there's going to be 
a roller coaster of emotions that I'm going to experience. So I keep you guys updated about all these things if you're curious and if you have any questions about your fear of commitment or even if you're concerned when it comes to committing to a marriage, you can always drop me a question on Instagram at smallgirlbigtalk. And I would also like to invite you to share with us in a Q&A section on Spotify or the comment section below in YouTube on what's your biggest fear when it comes to committing to a relationship. It would be great to hear from you and I cannot wait to see you in my next episode. Bye!